Hey guys and welcome to another TG Help video. Now this video is for perhaps those that have some memory problems. Um, so basically I'm going to see, tell you what you kind of really need for the water shader mod and a HD texture pack. I mean this is my system. It's not brilliant, it's quite old actually. Um, <laughs> but the RAM that I have and uh, is 8 gigabytes. A DDR2 RAM and the processor is a quad core, it's in 2.5 GHz so it's unclockable, which is annoying. But you know, that's what I have. Um but I'm pretty sure that most at least yeah, most processors can handle this. If you're on a 32 bit computer, something that I found really does help because my brother has problems with this because he has a 32 bit computer, is um when you in Minecraft, so it's gonna open Minecraft up now. Uh, basically, you can't run certain Minecraft at certain uh, configurations. Yeah, I think that's what you'll call it. Um, obviously, this is 1.2.3, uh, but and the mod doesn't work for this one currently, but hopefully it will soon. So, um, let's just load up any map. Doesn't matter. Oh, do not look at that. You did not see that. Ignore. Um, considering most of these have to be converted, I'll just make a new one. That's fine. Oops, squeaky chair. Um, some of them, someone even said that when he maximizes uh, Minecraft to the full screen, so like when he switches it like that, yeah, he, uh, he gets this. Ran, Minecraft has run out of memory. Um, well, if you've got a 32-bit computer, or if you even if you've got a 32-bit computer and a good computer, you still just can't have. It's set like this, so you have to make sure it's not on far. Normally, if it's set on far on a 32 bit computer, a little message will come up saying it's not recommended, you might crash, and it's probably what might be crashing your computer. Um, but of course, I've got a 64 bit computer, so we can handle it. Now, if you do have a 64 bit computer and it's still doing this, you may actually have um, not got the 64 bit Java. So, in that case, you know. Um, Go find it. So go on Google. Just literally just type in 64 bit Java. I mean, Google's quite useful. Um, Java, 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 Java. Java.com. So is there. 64 bit browser. ETI 64 bit Java. So there you go. And then you can just follow the instructions from here. And, you know, it's search it up. I'm pretty sure that's not. There's a, an easier direct link. Probably on the Java website, so I mean, downloads. Um, obviously, it even detects your Java, so if you need 64 bit, it should be able to work it out. Uh, but as soon as you have that installed, you can then not only run Minecraft on far view distance, but also, yes, I don't really want you to run that, it's fine. Yes, I know, I have it. Um, you can run on far, Minecraft on far view distance, and you can obviously also run Minecraft with more than one gig. Now for those of you that don't know this, you can run servers or Minecraft with more than one gig uh, through a bat file. Now basically the bat file was just originally a text file and then I just changed it into a bat file. So I just open it in Notepad++. Uh, which is obviously a very useful program. I like it. Um, it will come up with basically just the code. I do not like a plugin, thank you. Just the code that you need to run a certain .jar file with however many RAM. So my this my Minecraft server .jar is running with 4 gigabytes, so 4096. 1 gigabyte is 1024 and all you do you just times that by however many gigs you want to run the server. Now of course this relies heavily on how much RAM you have in your computer. If you only have 4 gigs of RAM or less, I wouldn't recommend it at all. Just keep it at 1 gig. If you have more, then that's fine. You can probably get away. Let's say you had six gigabytes, you can get away with a two gigabyte server. But you really need at least that four gigabytes for your operating system, especially on Windows Seven, just for it to run smoothly. Um, so yeah. Now, of course, that was only for the server. In fact, I forgot to show you that. That's just for the server. But all you have to do, if you wanted to use it for Minecraft, is you literally just get remove this here the server part and it will just be the minecraft.jar but of course you'll need to download the minecraft.jar uh, from the minecraft website I'll even show you that 
So go to Minecraft and Minecraft.net. Then you click on download in this little section here. And it will have it say so show all platforms and you should be able to find the Minecraft.jar, which is how you can change as you can see it even shows you some of the code hit there, but the code that I have is a is a bit different. It's I don't know, I like it that way. This is how I like it. But you can find that code in many, many places. You can just look it up and I'll also put it in the description for you, uh, the one that I have. Right, um this is actually recording at a different time. I realise there's something I have missed. Now in my um see if I can get it up, no that's not it, in my server folder I didn't explain how to make it into a bat file so let's say you had a text file um, you know you just make a text file you copy, so there it is you open it up and you copy and paste the code that I will have in the description and into the text file so there you go you have it in there the thing is now at the moment that won't do anything because you can't run it. This you can actually run it and it will run the server as you can see. See it does a little command box and then it runs it with 4 gig as it says here. And then when you stop it, obviously it's starting a new spawn so I'm just going to stop that now. So this is basically just a text document at the moment so you have to change it. Now as you can see I have all the... <laughs> I can't even remember what they're called. If we're going um, folder and Organize, folder and search options, view, um, but yeah, the extensions. I've got the extensions shown on all of my files so I can change them easily. Basically, most, most of the time that's ticked and uh, it won't show them. So if you just untick that, you can, it will show the extensions so you can change them as you will. So if I just do that and type in bat, yes, I, I'm sure I want to change it and now it's a bat file and it will actually run whatever code you put in there and then if you want to change it you just change it back to txt and uh, text and you can edit it wherever you want so that's that so that's that that's basically the main things about RAM now for those there is something else you can do if you have a 64-bit computer you have 64-bit Java and it's still doing it uh, you can try doing this so if I go to um, I was trying to think how to get to it should I control, control panel System and security. Uh, view amount of RAM and processor speed. So system, and it allows you the, this bit that it came up to here. Again, you can just get to it by start, right clicking on computer and properties. Um, that's pretty much it. I can't remember how you do it on XP. It's been absolutely ages since I've used the operating system. I used to know everything about it. Uh, but basically, from here you click advanced system settings in this top left hand corner. And it will come up with this. So basically, you've got performance, user profiles, and startup recovery on the advanced tab. So if you click on performance, you can deal with all things with, uh, you know, visual effects, processor, memory, virtual memory, and virtual memory is what you want. You can actually um, alter this. I've just chosen uh, let Windows choose what's best for my computer, and you can actually just do for best appearance or best performance. Um, best performance will really I think that's kind of the best option. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, ignore that tab. Advanced. Now here, um, I'm not actually completely sure whether or not what's better, but I always put on um, programs because, well, when I'm recording, I definitely want um, more of the process to be working on the actual program, such as fraps for recording and Audacity. So I leave that like that. But um, if you're not recording, um, you could do background services, but honestly, that's just personal preference. So as you can see, in my virtual memory, I've got 8,191 megabytes, so 8 gigabytes. Um, but as you can see, if I click on change, and normally most people will have this ticked, and this is all will be grayed out. So if you untick that, uh, as you can see down here, it will tell you what your currently allocated memory is and what's recommended. Um, now, of course, I don't have 12 gigs of RAM. I know that. Uh, but basically what the computer does, it can create virtual memory uh, by using your um, hard disk space really. Uh, so it's told me I needed that recommended. So what I've done is, is it, when you untick that, I clicked on custom size and I've put the initial size to what I actually have for my RAM. Um, normally it's just that value, that value, value there. And then on the maximum size, I've just done what's recommended. That then gives the computer a lot of leeway and it makes sure that, well, it, things should run better. So you then set that, OK, and that will, will require a 
computer restart. So that's basically things about RAM for those having a bit of trouble. You can have a look at that. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. If it still does not work, go away, Jav. Um, then I'm not quite sure. I'll have to keep having a look at it. But this should, these things should help. Um, if it doesn't work, then just always just check back to make sure you've not missed anything. Always helps. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So I hope this helped. Um, if it still didn't help, let me know and I'll see if I can do anything else because that's what I'm here for. So see you guys later. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like. Um, it helps a lot. Bye-bye. Uh,